Today we know that pretty much most galaxies out there contain supermassive black holes in their center. Not all, but most. Side note, if you'd like to find out about one galaxy nearby that doesn't have one, check out the video in the description. And for many years now, scientists using various computer simulations, and specifically supercomputer simulations, have been speculating about the effect these black holes have on the rest of the galaxy where they're located. Because generally it's always been believed that some of these very massive black holes, especially the ones that become active and start to emit a lot of light, producing ridiculous amounts of energy, might have a tendency to, maybe, kill the entire galaxy. As in basically cause a shutdown of star formation, turning an active galaxy into something similar to a typical, quiet, barely visible galaxy, with a lot of ancient stars in the center and practically no star formation anywhere. And by the way, quite a few of these have been discovered in the past, but up to this point, all of this was mostly based on simulations and I guess to some extent, somewhat hypothetical. And so the main question here has always been, what exactly kills the galaxies? Is it the central black hole or is there some other mechanism? With the other question being in regards to central black holes. What happens near them when they become very active? And what happens to all of the gas and all of the material near them as it tries to enter the black hole and as it creates the accretion disk around it? Now, as I mentioned before, to date, pretty much all of this was based on supercomputer simulations. And even though these simulations were relatively accurate, it's not really the same as getting actual observations. And looks like for the first time ever, we get two separate studies with two separate types of observations, potentially proving all of this once and for all. With one observation regarding black holes from a very specific period in the universe when many black holes were active, but the other and more exciting one from a galaxy really close to us, one of the closest active galaxies in the vicinity of the Milky Way, Circinus Galaxy. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss some of these discoveries in this video, talk about what all of this means and what this basically proves, and briefly talk about how all of this was achieved. And let's actually start with the first discovery coming from the James Webb Space Telescope. The discovery that came from a region really far away from planet Earth. Here we're talking about distances in billions of light years or specifically the redshift of 2. Now normally, the biggest discoveries from the James Webb come from much farther away. We usually refer to this as the cosmic dawn, or essentially when many of the galaxies were just forming and all of the stars were just starting to shine. But approximately 2 to 3 billion years after the Big Bang, the universe went through the cosmic noon, the period of extremely fast star formation also the period very likely producing most of the stars in the entire universe, but also the period of a lot of black hole activity. During this time, a lot of black holes became extremely bright, and this is essentially where we find most quasars and blazers out there. Basically, during this time, 2 to 3 billion years after the Big Bang, the entire universe was much brighter, much more active, and of course, much more energetic. And it's also quite likely that during this time, many galaxies grew much faster as a result of constant collisions and constant interactions. But, as I mentioned previously, this is also when the black holes were much more active as well. And here we're talking about supermassive black holes in centers of various galaxies. And so in this recent study that you can find in the description below, the researchers used the data from James Webb Space Telescope to conduct a detailed observation of approximately 100 galaxies, all located in the cosmic noon. So basically all of them were about 11 to 9 billion years old. With the focus being figuring out what exactly happens in these galaxies, especially when the black holes become very active. And here in essence it confirms the idea we refer to as galactic quenching. When the black hole in the center becomes too active and starts to emit way too much energy, it essentially completely stops star production in the entire galaxy, to some extent killing the galaxy the galaxy becomes quiescent, with all of this only happening for one simple reason, a massive outflow of a lot of gas from the center where the black hole is located that removes all of the gas that's meant for stars out of the entire galaxy. And though all of this was based on simulations previously and it wasn't clear if these outflows can be powerful enough to remove all of this gas, the observations from the James Webb revealed that some of these emissions are super powerful. It uncovered massive outflows of gas 
that in theory can remove everything from the host galaxy. And none of this would even take a long time, just a few million years. And so here they discovered gas escaping various galaxies in different stages of evolution, some of them being young, some of them being old, with some even still being active and forming stars, but all of them with an extremely powerful outflow of gas that's removing gas from the galaxy 300 times faster than it's being converted into stars. Naturally suggesting that within just a few million years, there's going to be no gas left, the galaxy becomes quiet. And of course confirming that active galactic nuclei or active black holes are definitively responsible for shutting down star formation in various galaxies through this process of gas outflow. And during this period, it looks like these outflows were particularly frequent in a lot of massive galaxies. In this case, by analyzing the emissions of sodium and by calculating the velocity of the escape of sodium from these galaxies, the researchers discovered that in a lot of these galaxies, the mass outflow was anywhere from 3 to 100 solar masses per year in at least half of the galaxies they looked at. And so this seemed to be an extremely common thing in a lot of different massive galaxies during the cosmic noon, which means that many of them potentially stopped star formation at this time. And all of this was a result of one single phenomenon, a supermassive black hole in the center. And though this is not a surprising news and not a surprising discovery, it's an important confirmation of a lot of supercomputer simulations and of course a lot of assumptions from a lot of previous studies. But that's of course something from really far away, from extremely distant universe. Do we have anything else more exciting from somewhere nearby? In other words, is this something that's possibly still happening or maybe even happening near us? Yeah, the answer is basically yes. Although maybe not to the same extent. And this is actually an even more important discovery by using a different telescope. This involved the radio telescope in Chile, ALMA telescope. And this is a much more exciting discovery from a galaxy we've discussed previously in the video in the description. This is known as the Circinus galaxy, an active galaxy 13 million light years away from us that's one of the most massive galaxies near the Milky Way and is actually a part of 12 galaxies, 12 large galaxies, we often refer to as the Council of Giants. You can see all of them in this image right here. And so this particular galaxy, Circinus, along with Centaurus A, are some of the most exciting galaxies because they're active. They have an active galactic nucleus. An active black hole that's not technically a quasar because it's not pointing toward us, but we can still study it by looking at what's inside. Naturally though, because of all of the gas in the vicinity and because of the tremendous amount of activity, and also obviously distances, it's not easy to study this in a lot of detail. For example, here we know that it has at least two different rings that seem to have a lot of gas ejected at various distances. The outer ring is about 1400 light years across, the inner ring is about 260 light years across. But even these distances are still quite extreme for a lot of modern telescopes. Yet despite this, the scientists behind the recent study were able to use ALMA telescopes to definitively determine what's happening inside. They basically managed to observe everything here with the resolution of just one light year. For the first time ever, allowing us to see what happens near active galactic nucleus extremely close to the Milky Way. And once again specifically focusing on the gas flow, including the interaction of plasma and various types of molecules. And so here they were able to capture high resolution pictures of basically gas flow heading toward and away from the supermassive black hole, uncovering the overall accretion flow generated by these massive objects. In other words, they basically were able to image the accretion disk and all of the gas flowing into it, but not through a simulation, through an actual image. In this case, depicted with two different colors. Red here represents carbon monoxide. Green represents hydrogen cyanide or high density molecular gas. Whereas the blue stuff around this is essentially atomic carbon that seems to be everywhere around this. Lastly, we have hydrogen that's seen in pink. And one of the most interesting discoveries in this case is really in regards to what happens to this gas as it approaches the black hole. The answer is basically nothing. It seems to pass the black hole, forming a kind of a fountain that kind of moves around the black hole just to come back into the accretion disk. And so even though we imagine black holes as these vacuum cleaners with the accretion disk around them that sort of suck everything in and don't allow much to escape, the reality is very different. 
they seem to continuously recirculate most of the gas around them, with only some particles once in a while falling into the black hole. And so unlike previously assumed, a huge portion of all of this gas does not contribute to the growth of the black hole. It's actually expelled from the vicinity of the black hole, creating the atomic outflow. And as all of this gas falls into the black hole again, it's once again heated up, produces very hot temperatures and extremely bright light, with some of it falling into the black hole, but the majority of it escaping back and repeating the cycle once again, over and over and over. Which is very likely how we actually get these very powerful outflows and these very powerful galactic winds, which are normally responsible for completely shutting down star formation. In other words, here we're observing galactic quenching on a much smaller scale. If the black hole in this galaxy was more massive, it's quite likely it would have stopped star formation a long time ago. Here it just doesn't seem to be massive enough to have such a dramatic effect. But the important discovery here is that this is actually the first time we've ever seen this actually happening around a black hole. And of course, the main discovery is that the process of black hole feeding is not very efficient. Here, most of the gas that falls into the black hole is violently dispersed around it, creating the resulting outflows, or creating the galactic winds. Only a tiny portion of the mass ends up inside. Moreover, one of the more unusual discoveries was the fact that even though this is an active galactic nucleus, it seems to have at least 30 times more gas around it than is required to produce the observations we see. And this basically suggests that our previous assumptions about accretion disks are maybe just a little bit too simple. Because it looks like most of this disk is actually gas. It's gas falling into the black hole, missing the black hole, and then coming back for another round, over and over and over again. Although in some cases, or I guess in some black holes that are really massive, the outflow is so powerful, it goes beyond the entire galaxy. Which is of course what the James Webb recently saw in a lot of those galaxies during the cosmic noon. But just the fact that all of this was observed directly with approximately one light year scale is absolutely ridiculous. These are essentially the most accurate observations of the central black hole ever when it comes to the accretion disk and the gas interaction. With all of this done by basically observing very specific molecules around the black hole, and measuring the redshift, discovering that they're just moving way too fast, hundreds of kilometers per second, usually either toward the black hole or away from it. But in many cases not fast enough to escape the galaxy, so they basically come back for another round, creating a kind of a accretion recycling process. And so this galaxy, despite being active, is definitely not going to become quiescent. But because of its location, since it's so close to us, and also because of its orientation, it's basically one of the best locations for us to study active black holes in order to learn what's really happening here. And so with the success of this particular study, I can only imagine we're going to hear more once additional studies try to take this a few steps further. But at least for now, these are some really exciting discoveries about black holes, or I guess more importantly, really important physical observational confirmations. Something that's of course really important for a scientific process. We had a lot of simulations, we had a lot of theories and propositions, now we have physical evidence, which of course means that we understand supermassive black holes just a little bit better. But we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos with future discoveries. Check out similar videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.